Mark, we've got a brand new product here at Southern Manufacturing from XYZ Machine Tools. I'm led to believe it just hit the deck uh, here uh, just a week ago at XYZ, is that correct? That's literally correct, yes. We were over in Barcelona a couple of weeks ago, we ordered it while we were there, it arrived the week after. So XYZ Machine Tools have now gone into 3D printing? Yes, we certainly have and it's a very exciting time for us. Well, you've started with a, a pretty good brand, should I say, as a good starting point, HP. Tell us about the machine. Uh, well, the machine is the 3D printer and we've also got a processing station that goes with it and there's a build unit that's inside the printer and that gets transferred from the processing unit where the powder's loaded into the printer, it does the printing job and then it goes back to the processing station for cooling and cleaning. So would the very fact that it's, it's a HP product mean that um, it, it gives you that level of assurance that you're going to have a, a quality machine producing a quality part. Absolutely, and HP are very confident in this product as well. And the types of materials that you'd be printing on here, Mark? At the moment, we've got three types of material. We've got PA11, PA12 and PA12 with glass beads. And where do you see the market for this, for XYZ? Obviously, traditionally, metal cutting company. Uh, where's it going to fit? I think it's going to fit in a lot of educational areas, a lot of research and development departments. Um, it's going to cover a multitude of, of what we would traditionally manufacture on our CNC machines. And is there a fair point to say that sometimes uh, tool makers or injection moulding companies don't quite have enough quantity to justify making a tool and doing, doing all those necessary uh, manufacturing processes when they can now just put it on here? Yeah, that's absolutely correct, yeah. And, and the other thing is that they can change a design and it's instant. They just send it to the printer and the new design is printed. What about the cooling process on here? I've been told there's a little bit, uh, there's some, some benefits and advantages to the cooling mechanism here. Yeah, what it does is, it, if, let's say it does a 10 hour run on the print job, it then goes into the processing station for a 10 hour cooling. But if you've got two build units, you can have one uh, job printing while the other one's cooling. What about the, the powders that can go in here? Um, are you restricted to HP product? No, uh, there's lots of different manufacturers making their own powders and they just need to get them certified by HP for use in this printer. Because that's often been an expensive and a restrictive area, isn't it, of 3D printing? Yeah, certainly, but not anymore. And um, what about metals? Is this ever going to, can it do metals? Will it go into metals? At the moment it doesn't do metals. I don't know whether it will do metals in the future, but the whole point of the process is that a lot of the parts that are traditionally made by metals are now being replaced by 3D printed plastic parts. And is this what you've got an example of here? Can you talk our viewers through what you're showing? Yeah, yeah, certainly. What we've got here is we've got a traditionally manufactured aluminium machined uh, bracket and now we've got the 3D printed part that re replaces it, uh, which is a fraction of the weight. But what about the strength though? Yeah, it still has exactly the same strengths that are needed for the part that's, that is produced. And would I be right in then saying that I, I did also read in the literature that um, a lot of this machine is made up from parts that are made on this machine? Yeah, certainly. I think they quoted 50% of the internal parts are actually printed on this 3D printer. What about the print heads in here? Is it just one print head or is it more than one? No, there's multiple print heads in there. So that would therefore give you that volume of throughput that you need? Yes, that's quite correct, yes. As I see it here, as I've said already, it's quite a big machine for, for, for volume, uh, volume printing. Do they do smaller models as well or other models? They do do other models. There's a 3200 model, but it is exactly the same size, which doesn't have the fast printing technology that the 4200 here has. There's also a new model coming out in March, which is the 4210, which has got much higher capacity on the powder that you can uh, use. And I noticed on some of the literature, Mark, it says it's up to 10 times faster uh, than any other pre 3D printing technology. How does it achieve that? It's got a fast print mode, um, which as HP state is 10 times faster than anything else is on the market. And would that affect the accuracy of the parts that come off? I mean, how does it achieve high levels of tolerance as well? No, not really. It, the tolerances that HP quote are plus or minus 0.2 millimetres, which we've been led to believe is absolutely fantastic for the 3D printing world. I also note quick and simple installation. How quickly could you be up and running with something like this? I think in a couple of weeks, the delivery is so quick. Uh, the, uh, the installation is not as quick, that's about five days, but I mean, literally, you could be up and running within a couple of weeks. And what about the processor on this? And so what we see here is the machine. Uh, it's quite an ample footprint, but I know you can, you can do uh, volumes of components in here. Do you need, what else do you need to purchase with it? You don't really need to purchase anything else with it. Obviously, your solid models will come from your solid modeling software. Uh, HP give you some free software to nest it, and that's the process where all your parts are laid out into the build unit. 
it's quite a game changer for XYZ, very exciting times. Yeah, certainly. And with HB behind us, I mean, one of the best in the market, we're confident we're going to sell this to a lot of industry.